The story begins we see Yuji, Megumi, and Nobara walking in the busy street. Yuji asks Nobara what she's going to do for the rest of the day. Nobara says it's still early so she will go shopping later in the day. Yuji says he will be going to the movies while Megumi decides to go home. When Megumi takes a cab home, Yuji tries to convince Nobara to go to the movies with him. He tells her that the name of the movie is Human Earthworm 4. He explains the plot of the movie which entails a scientist who successfully fused the DNA of an earthworm with a human to create a hybrid from both species. Eventually, the hybrid escapes and stumbles into a human camp where he finds love with a lady. One unfortunate evening, the people rebel against the earthworm man and his lover, and they kill the man. After killing him, little earthworm children emerge behind the woman. This doesn't convince Nobara and she insists on shopping. She even invites Yuji to come with her, but he refuses, telling her that he wants to go and see the human Earthworm movie. The scene shifts to Oe Toto and Mai Mai having a meeting with one of Jujutsu High officials. The old man opens the meeting by stating how important it is for the future leaders of Jujutsu High to be promoted to first grade sorcerers. He then urges them to recommend students who are fit for that position. Mei Mei recommends Maki and Panda, while Oe Toto recommends Yuji, Nobara, and Megumi. After the meeting, Mei Mei and Oe Toto set to play a game of ping pong. During the game, Oe Toto explains that those recommended for the first graded class by them will be tested by going on first grade missions. Their success rate in those missions will determine their promotion or not. Oe Toto also expresses his joy knowing that he will be accompanying Yuji on missions. Unfortunately, Mai Mai quickly pulls him out This completely shatters Elwa Toto's spirit. The scene shifts to Nobara walking down a street while she sucks the contents out of a cup with a straw. A lady approaches her from behind and asks her if she was with Yuji the other time. Nobara confirms her claim positive and they both enter a restaurant. The lady introduces herself as Yuko to Nobara and she shows her a picture of her when she was in high school. In the picture, Yuko seems to be very fat, but now she is slim and fit. Nobara is very surprised and asks her how she became so slim and fit. Yuko explains that she grew 15 centimeters and the stress for moving to another city aided in her weight loss journey. Yuko then explains how she was still in love with Yuji. She narrates how she wanted to exchange phone numbers with him in high school, but she ended up only taking a picture with her. Yuko asks Nobara if Yuji is in a relationship, but she says she will call someone who knows Yuji better than her. So she calls Megumi. In a blink of an eye, Megumi arrives at the restaurant. Nobara asks him if he knows about Yuji's love life. <laughs> Megumi confirms that Yuji is still single. Nobara asks him why he thinks Yuji is single. Megumi then explains that Yuji wasn't upset when they moved to Tokyo and he pinned an erotic picture of a lady in his school. Megumi explains that if he had a girlfriend, she wouldn't allow him to pin that kind of picture in his room. So Yuko and Nobara both ask Megumi what kind of ladies Yuji prefer. Megumi tells them that Yuji loves tall girls. <laughs> Shortly after, Yuji appears at the restaurant. Nobara realizes that Yuji might not recognize Yuko after all these years and this might completely break Yuko. But fortunately, Yuji remembers Yuko. In a flashback scene, Yuji friends in high school ask him the name of the girl he likes in the class. Yuji replies that he likes none of them. Meanwhile, Yuko is eavesdropping outside. Yuji friends persuade him to choose at least one girl. Yuji then chooses Yuko. The boys laugh at Yuji's choice because Yuko was fat then. Yuji explains that it doesn't matter because he loves her handwriting and the way she eats. Eventually, Yuji escorts Yuko to the train station. Megumi tells Nobara that Yuji should have tried to collect Yuko's number. Nobara tells him not to worry because she has Yuko's number. She also explains that she has finalized her feelings and realized that she was angry that Yuji was about to get girlfriend before she got a boyfriend. Yuji eventually joins them and they walk home together. Gojo and Yutahim meet in a car. Gojo narrates how curses have been emerging more than usual in Kyoto. This indicates that there might be someone leaking information in their midst, so he tells her to investigate it alongside Yuji, Megumi, and Nobara. The trio meet with Yutahayam and she explains that according to her theory, there are two culprits. One of them is directly above the principal and she can't do anything concerning that, but the other one reports to him so that one will be their concern. The scene switches to Jujutsu High, Kasumi approaches Mekamaro and tells him today is the last day for him to submit his notebook, but unfortunately, he falls asleep. Kasumi pokes his head to make sure he is truly asleep. 
Through the process of elimination, Yuvaheim concludes that Mekamaru has to be the traitor. It is revealed that Mekamaru is actually a puppet and the real body lies in a dungeon below the structure. The name of the puppet master is Muta. Yuvaheim explains that Muta can control puppets all over Japan thanks to his heavenly pact and he is perfectly suited to be a mole. They finally reach a door and opened it but unfortunately they didn't find Muta there. Now they are quite sure that the mole is Mekamaru. Meanwhile, Mekamaru is seen in Gido's hideout. He is plugged to lots of tubes which seems to be keeping him alive. Gido enters the room accompanied by Mahito. Mahito expresses his disgust always seeing Muta smell like mold and he suggests that they kill him. Gido stops him and reminds him about the pact they all formed. This involves Muta giving Gido and Mahito useful information about Jujutsu High in exchange for Mahito's technique called Idle Body Transformation. This technique has the ability to restore Mekamaru body back to normal. Gido then warns Mahito that if he breaks the pact and kills Mekamaru, they won't be able to get the information they need from him. Mekamaru calls Mahito a scumbag and tells him to use this technique to heal him. Mahito is pissed by this comment and then says he might turn him into an insect. Gido then takes his time to explain the consequences of breaking the pact forged with others to Mahito. Held by this restriction, Mahito reluctantly uses his technique to heal Mekamaru. After checking to see if every part of his body works, Mahito tells him to be at least happy, but Mekamaru tells him that until he is done with his mission, there is no rejoicing. Mekamaru summons his puppets to fight Mahito. Gido asks Mahito if he needs any help with the fight but Mahito turns him down, assuring him that he can deal with Mekamaru. The puppet refuses to give up and grabs Mahito's legs but he uses it to his advantage and swings the puppet towards the other ones approaching him. The few who escape the attack jump out of the ruin and rush towards Mahito. Mahito uses a technique to make his arm bigger and deliver one heavy blow to all the puppets at once. After destroying all of Mekamaru's puppets, he discovers that Mekamaru himself has escaped. Suddenly red beams of light break the ground beneath Mahito, and this forces him to jump outside. A large machine emerges and it appears to be controlled by Mekamaru. Mahito praises him for not wasting those years in bondage but using it to build himself a formidable weapon like this. Inside the machine, Mekamaru realizes Gido has cast a veil over them, cutting all forms of communication with the outside world. Mekamaru is at a disadvantage because he can't face both Mahito and Gido in a fight without Gojo's help. However, Gido doesn't look like he's going to be involved in the fight. After gathering cursed energy for 17 years, Mekamaru uses one year worth of cursed energy to unleash a powerful attack. <laughs> That's where this video ends. You have to click on the right to see its next part. And to see best anime recap on my channel, you have to click on the left. If you liked the video, like it and subscribe to see more contents of this.